welcome back welcome back now we're on m2 which is to justify design decisions showing how the design will result in an effective solution so justifying simply means why have you done this and you have to then say okay why have you done it and how is this specific thing that you've chosen to do how is it actually going to help you get to your final destination and in this case in this instance the final destination is a program that works that has all or most of the features that were required so this image here i have this was copied directly from the spec yes so if you go down to, to the spec you'll see this as a section there so what we need to do for the design section so problem definition statements to include um, intended users, full summary of the problem to be solved, constraints, benefits, nature of the interactivity, complexity of problem. Now, I think the only thing we need to focus on from this list here is nature of interactivity because we're designing and for something to be interactive, that's how the user uses it. So it could be a GUI, it could be a command line. I mean, to be fair, command line is GUI in this day because we have to type into it. But the typical GUI, there are like buttons and text boxes and stuff like that. So for interactivity, for, for everything on the list, actually, I would say justify why you've designed using this option. So what is it and why design it this way? For interactivity, um, I've got an example of an answer here, which is GUI or command line. And I'm going to say command line first because it's simple number choices. So um, are you team one? Press one for yes or two for no. Boom. Are you going to be a single person or are you going to be a team of five? Press one for single person, press two for multiple people. Boom. So that's what I mean by sim uh, simple number choices. It's very simple to follow. The text is very clear. So that's what I would do for GUI. That's why. OK, so what is interactivity? That's what I would always do for every single thing that we speak about. What is it? Give a reference. And then why design this way? Why did we design using um, a command line interface? Because again, simple, simple number choices, easy to follow, very easy to program. We don't have to worry about GUIs. We don't have to worry about learning extra things. It's just program it, run it, and they can see the text on screen. Next, we have variables. And it's going to be the same questions all the way through. So what are they and why did you use them? in your design now the variables probably weren't very obvious in my pseudocode or flowchart but whenever someone had to type a value in and that value had to be saved it's probably going to be saved in a variable whenever somebody um, like a team for example whenever they played the game and the scores needed to be saved they're most likely going to be stored using variables or data structures just so that we can go back to them at a later point in time and reference them so variables what are they and why did you use them let me think of this one so a variable we know what a variable is a value that can be changed hence coming from the word vary or variable uh, why did you use them this is a this is the best way uh, or the simplest way to store values in a program that you might want to refer to later on or that you might want to change later on how will using this result in an effective solution this is a game we're going to have names of teams, the names of people. We're going to have the scores from the teams, the total scores at the end. We're going to have the, um, the types of games that we're going to play. All of this can be all of this extra information we can store in a variable. So we don't have to have any person writing down any scores or any names or anything. Once we run the program, uh, they put the information in, they press enter, the game starts. Everything is stored in the background using variables. This is how I would do it. That was a bit long winded and wordy but you choose your way that you want to do it. The next one is data types. And again, same thing. What are they and why did you use them? So that's the thing. And how will this, to be fair, that those last two questions, why did you use them? And how will this result in an effective solution? Kind of the same thing. I didn't actually realize that until now. But in either case, data types, what are they? These are the multiple forms of data that we can use in programming languages. So we've got strings, we've got... Um, uh, integers, we have doubles, we have all of these things that we can use. Why are we using them? Different forms of data need to be stored using the correct data type. And even though Python doesn't force you to specify the data type of a variable, it still saves it as a data type. How is this going to help you later on? Okay, well, if you're storing um, the team name, it's going to be strings most likely. It's not going to be like one only. It might be team one. If you're storing the scores of someone, then it's going to probably be numbers or it could even be um, so a number is an integer. Sorry, or it could, could even be a float or a double where you say like 
5.5 but we probably won't really use that let's just stick to integers whole numbers and that's how i would do it and i repeated these same questions for every single thing so let me just go through the list and you guys can pause and look, have a look at it at any time so the next one is sequence again what is a sequence and how is this going to help you with an effective solution so if you refer to assignment a where, where we had the constructs of programming i think it was called is going to have sequence selection iteration those three things have to be there and the next one i have again is selection so what is a selection and how is using a selection going to help you get to an effective solution at the end we have iteration as well what is an iteration how is this going to help you get to an effective solution at the end or a good result at the end next we have data structures say i'm going to keep repeating the same question just so it sticks what is a data structure or what are data structures and how is this going to result in an effective solution uh, data storage and data structure actually you probably don't need this one here because these are probably most likely the same thing in python for what we're doing uh, i would leave it at that control structures as well mm, not so much needed but hey might as well I'll, let me just say everything and you guys can go through and decide what you want so we have control structures again what are they and how is this going to help us to get to an effective solution data validation very very important for this one i might as well go over this one so what is data validation we have verification if you guys can remember from your unit two databases we have validate and we have verify okay let me just quickly go over this because this is an it stroke computer science thing you have to know anyway when you verify something you have to look at the original and you have to look at what you have and say hmm are these the same thing yes verified when someone has to verify your entry into like i don't know a bar or a secret club or something you have your id your driver license they have to verify that this is who you say you are right validate slightly different but the same end goal we need to double check to make sure that we have what we want so that's what it means to validate if i'm going to validate something in python let's say let's say you type in I ask you for age. I say, okay, please enter your age, Mr. Bob the Builder. And you type in Bob the Builder. That's not a number. Age is typically going to be numbers. So the age should be, I don't know, one to whatever the maximum number that we can have in Python is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to a million, let's say. To validate this, I check that this is a number. In Python and other languages, like let's say Kotlin, Java, it's normally along the lines of if age dot is num then we check if it's a number if it's a number perfectly fine if it's not a number we won't accept it so my name is bob is not a number it's a string so we won't accept that in any case let me stop now um, so we do data validation and what is this and how is this going to help us get to an effective solution error handling and reporting same thing again same questions what is it and how is this going to help us get to an effective solution this section I have choice of language. This section here was copied directly from the spec. Now you probably would have mentioned some of this already in the planning section. So where it says choice of language, it comes again on the design justification. So why are you designing with Python in mind, right? Choice of language, list of predefined programs and or code snippets, probably not so much. List of ready-made and or original assets such as digital animation, probably not so much for you again, unless you're doing some kind of game that you're going to be using GUI and sound and all of that stuff. Maybe not so massively important. Feedback from others to help uh, refine alternative design ideas, prototypes, and make decisions. So these are all things that you can speak about in your justification of design section. Your test plan with test data to include typical extreme and erroneous data. What this means is typical data, if I ask you for your age, right? Uh, Typically speaking, people, are, let's say, between the ages of, let's say, 5 and 150 will work. Extreme data, if I ask you for your age and you enter 595, that's a bit much, right? And erroneous data would simply mean that I ask you for your age and you enter, my name is Bob. That should not work. And again, we have to justify why we've put things in place to do these things or to catch these things. That's the verification and validation thing I mentioned earlier technical and design constraints i don't think this is something that you guys need to focus on too much in any case hopefully that was useful and again the main main sections that you need to focus on are up here all these things that you've 
designed you're trying to justify your design decision so whatever you have designed say why you have designed it that way and how is that design going to help you get to your end goal now you do this for every single program you write at every single stage thanks for watching and good luck